tech is awesome. It is one of the few things that get me legitimately excited about living. Yeah, sure, we haven't come to a state where we have flying cars or cyber implants like you do in cyberpunk, but still we are getting there thanks to technological advancement. Just imagine being woken up from a coma after 25 years today. You will see that we are doing all kinds of things that were unimaginable back in the day, like making virtual payments without actually using real money or just making your presence felt to a place that is thousands of kilometers away from you using video calling and the internet. But there are several annoying things that still haven't been fixed to date. Those problems have been existing for like decades altogether. And those are the things that we would be talking about in this episode of Elemental where we talk about the smaller things in tech that make a much bigger impact on the real world. You will no longer be catching us on Sundays at 1 p.m. because they're kind of axing this series, but I will still continue making awesome videos at Gadgets360, so you don't have to worry about that. And so, you can always subscribe to our channel, that is Gadgets360, and also consider hitting that bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Let's start off with the thing that has been the recipe for high blood pressure for the last 30 years or so. And no, we are not talking about salty foods, we are talking about printers. My dad got us a printer when I was 5 years old. I think it was an HP desk jet. Wait, when I was 5 years old, it was 2000. It's been 21 years. Time flies. Anyway. The problems that we faced back then, including things like print papers getting stuck in the printer and having to deal with one of these guys, a type B to type A connector. Yeah, these things are still prevalent to date. Yeah, and one of the biggest and the most annoying issues is that you still have to face print spooler issues. The same things that we used to face back then. It hasn't been fixed. When you print a document, your file is stored temporarily on your computer. Your printer retrieves the data when it is ready and prints the document. If the Windows print spooler service gets stuck, jobs that you send to the printer will not print and the printer itself will not respond in any way. Restarting the spooler does solve this problem for many, but a lot of times it doesn't. Another issue is that of drivers. No matter how sure you are that you have downloaded all the drivers known to mankind, there's always this one slip up that happens and then your printer acts as if it doesn't even know you. Yeah, you're just a complete stranger to it. You were the one who bought that printer, but no, it doesn't want to print anything. And the cartridges. Don't even get me started on that because cartridges, I think, these are the things that were made to play practical jokes on you on the worst days of your life. You just went out, got a new cartridge or just refilled your cartridge, put it inside the printer and the printer says, there's no ink. Why? Why? You take out the cartridge and you see that it is dripping ink, but the printer doesn't want to read it. Dear tech companies, listen to us. Please fix these problems. They have been around for three decades. It's overdue. Please. Before we get started on this one, I need to make a disclaimer, do not get me wrong, I think HDMIs have made our lives much, much simpler because we don't have to deal with a ton of wires while connecting a host system like your PC or your console or your set-top box to a display. You remember when you had that yellow, white and red cable that you had to fix? Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. So HDMIs have clearly made our lives easier. But what's the deal with blank screens? Like seriously, I have made sure that my system is working fine. My HDMI cable is working fine. My display is working fine. Yet I'm finding a blank screen on my display. My laptop or my PC has actually accepted the fact that some HDMI output is being connected to it. A cord is being inserted in it. Yet it doesn't want to work. Well, a lot of factors contribute to this stupidity but one of them is EDID or external display identification data. 
This data basically lets two compatible devices talk to each other so that they can share information about their own capabilities. This is why when you connect a super wide display to your PC, it will still accept it without any judgments at the correct resolution and frame rate because the two devices communicate. But like any relationship, if there's any kind of miscommunication, you're going to end up with trouble. HDMI features hot plugging, which basically means that you can connect two devices while your host system is still running. Now, this actually requires one of the pins to be dedicated to hot plugging. And that's where the problem arises because a lot of times your host system and your display aren't working quite right in synchrony and they end up not reading the hot plugging signal correctly. And that's why you end up with a blank screen. Okay, this one holds a special place in hell, at least for me. Like, what is the deal with a customizable back button? Why do you have to override the system gesture or the back button with a stupid custom button on one of the top corners? Seriously. And the worst bit is the back button appears at different places. Phones have gotten bigger and it's become increasingly frustrating to make a light ear leap to the top left corner just to go back when you could easily do it with a gesture or the button on the bottom. Now, a lot of you guys may say that Shubham, you can actually make a gesture like this to bring the top of the display down so that you can easily reach it. But as you can see, it's not that accessible. Yeah, it's not. And especially when you're supposed to make split second decisions, like when you are trying to make an online payment, those are the places where the back buttons are very, very inconsistent. We do understand that they don't want you to go back by accident, but seriously, this is something that really, really triggers me at times. I still remember the first time I watched Iron Man talking to Jarvis and I was like, yep, I want that. I want that in my life. Now, a lot of you guys may be like, yeah, it wasn't Iron Man who did it first. There was obviously Star Trek and a space odyssey who did that first, but that's not the point. The point is that we have come a long way, almost a decade since the first uh, voice assistant was made, but still we have made very little progress. Sure, they are very, very helpful when, let's say, you are cooking something or doing the dishes, but the amount of time that it takes to get back to a certain query or a command is insane. Okay, let's just check this out. I'm trying to make a call using Siri. Call Pranay Parab. This is the amount of time it takes to make a call. Now, sure, at the end of it, you can say that, yeah, I mean, it's a system. You need to be connected to the internet. A lot of factors contribute to this thing, but it shouldn't be this slow. A lot of times I find myself stop doing whatever I am doing. Let's say if I'm washing dishes, I stop washing dishes just because I don't want to go through the hassle of, you know, waiting for seven seconds. And then I also feel guilty because how lazy can I be? How difficult is it to call someone, right? So that guilt trip also kicks in. And don't even get me started on how these voice assistants hate our Indian accent. They are made for American or British audiences, mostly American audiences, and they completely fail to accept our accent. And the worst bit is, when you go to someone else's place and they have an Alexa or a Siri or a Google voice assistant while you have something else. So now you have to make sure that you communicate properly by using the right summon term. Yes, summon term is another thing. When you're using Google assistant, you have to say, okay, Google, when you're doing uh, when you're when you're working with Siri, you have to say, hey, Siri, when you're working with Alexa, you have to say, hey, Alexa. Just in case you say the wrong command, people are going to judge you. There's a lot of judgment associated with this because then they're going to be like, okay, listen, it is, hey Siri, okay? Yeah, please fix all of these things. Just make a universal voice command for all three of these guys. Just, it's, it's not that difficult. Okay, this is something that we talked about in the episode of Elemental in which we took a deeper dive into why smartphone repairs are so difficult. We talked about 
batteries and how they are not all that durable they don't last very long but the more important thing is that over the last three or four years we have had a lot of improvements in tech right but one thing has remained more or less steady the battery life of flagship smartphones back then it used to be eight to nine hours today give or take two more hours yeah why can't we have smartphones premium smartphones that can go on for minimum two days yeah sure you may say that mid-range and budget budget smartphones have this feature in which they have a massive battery life and it honestly depends on the kind of usage that a person is going for or the kind of priorities a person has premium smartphone users don't want that long of battery that's incorrect everyone loves long battery no one wants a downtime in their life in which they have connected their smartphones into a brick they don't want that now also it also contributes to a very important second thing a second factor and that is electricity consumption the less number of times you have to charge your smartphones the more electricity you save so it also ends up in savings and it's better for the world now while we're on this topic we should also talk about durability because let's let's accept it plastic in smartphones is often considered cheap these days and plastic is also incredibly wasteful and it is also toxic to the environment whereas glass well we, there is a bit of a debate around that but the major reason why people discard their smartphones is because either their back panel has shattered or their display has shattered and it is exorbitantly pricey to get those two things repaired so i think smartphone makers should invest into making their smartphones more durable into making glass a bit more durable and that brings us to the end of this very unusual episode of elemental i really hope you found it interesting yes let's address the elephant in the room that we started off with this video and that is there won't be any more elemental videos after this one it's an it's it's a sentimental time for me but it's fine because the spirit of elemental is still on because you can always check out the elemental playlist by going on the gadget c60 page or just sticking around for a while till you reach that end card you will always have that elemental playlist out there just remember that you subscribe to our channel and also share this video with your friends if you found it interesting i don't know helpful maybe helpful as well but then just spread the word around that yeah these are the five annoying issues that we have faced as always let me remind you that there are a lot of further reading links in the description that you can check out to expand your knowledge about the topic and remember that for all things tech log on to gadget360.com okay eh huh? This is Elemental and you are watching Gadget 360. My name is Shubham and Bye. 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 So subconsciously in some deep dark corner of your brain, you remember that video of a celebrity. What the? My dad got us a... My dad got us a print... My dad got us a... My dad got us a uh, an HP firewall. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> a lower uh, frequency. <laughs> to sum it all up, Apple has been a trendsetter in a lot of ways, be it gesture-based controls or sleeker laptops. Amount of monetary profit, but mainly influence, which in turn Anyway, that's the end of this video. If you like Elemental, do not forget to just subscribe to our channel. And also for all things tech, log on to Gadget360.com.